So on today's Shaka tutorial, I'm going to show you how you could do this, where you take a vertical or portrait video and then put a blur in the background instead of having those black bars. So let's see how we could do this within Shotcut. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. So for a lot of people who actually shoot video with their phones, most of us are used to taking these vertical or portrait type videos. And while that's really good for platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, or even YouTube Shorts, this is not so great whenever you're watching this on a widescreen where you can now see these black bars on the left and the right. So what do you actually do to fill in that space? Well, you have a lot of options here, but a lot of people like to have this blurry video in the background, which is actually a part of this original vertical video. So I am going to show you how to do this in Shotcut. So I'm going to show you how to do it kind of like the traditional way. And then I'm going to show you the new way to do that. That's kind of like a built in feature for these type of videos. Now, before we get into that, one thing that's really important is that you want to make sure that the resolution of this is going to be what you want on the final video, meaning that you want your video to be on a widescreen format. So 1080p, 2K, 4K. And if you do that, then you will be able to fill in these black portions because this is still a widescreen format. Now, if you actually look at this original video, at least this one right here, the resolution I have here is 750 by 1520. And so this is definitely not a 1080p resolution. So it's very important that whenever you do create your project within Shotcut, that you have it as a widescreen resolution so that it does have those two black bars in the left and right. So that means it gives you some area to put in this blurry background. Okay, so now we're here in Shotcut. So the first thing you want to do, as I mentioned earlier, is to make sure that your project resolution is correct. So in this case, we'll go up here to settings and then go to video mode. And in this case, I have it as 1080p. And there's obviously many other resolutions that you can choose. But the most important thing is you have a resolution that's actually going to be widescreen instead of intended just for vertical. So that way you'll be able to work with the black bars on the left and the right. So once you've done that, we'll go ahead and drag our clip down to our project timeline on its very first track. Now I'm going to drag it down here. And in this case, my video that I've shot here from my phone has a different variable frame rate. So if you see a message like this, just go ahead and cancel it. And now I have my video down here. So as you can see, here's the original vertical video, but here's the black bars on the left and the right. Now I'm first going to show you how to do this the more traditional way. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to add a track. So we're going to choose this track, right click, and then track operation. You could either add a video track or insert track. We're going to add a video track. And now we have a track above it. And the thing is, you actually want this clip to be on the top track, okay? So this one's fine. You can leave it where it is, and I'll show you why that's important. But we're going to go ahead and drag this again on the top track, okay? So what you've effectively done here is have the same video twice on two tracks. So why is this important? Well, it's important because this bottom one is going to be the one that's going to have the blurred video image. So you're going to go down here to this original track at the bottom, which is case V1 or track one. And once you have it selected, you're going to go here to filters. And the filter you're going to add here is the size, position, or rotate. You could type that in size. Here's size, position, and rotate. And once you have that, you'll notice that your original video is selected. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we could choose the size mode to have it distort. And once you do that, you could either manually move these things yourself, meaning the actual size and position, or you could use the zoom feature right here. So here's the zoom feature. Okay. So if you notice, I've zoomed in on the same image, but it's underneath. And so if you did it this way, it'll work just fine. And whatever you had in the video, it'll be mimicked or duplicated on the bottom layer. And as I stated a little bit earlier, you can do this manually. So in this case, you could reset this to 100%. It's still in distort, but here you can move things around and you could also increase the size as well. Like this. So this looks a lot more distorted. So it's 
kind of the same thing but i normally don't like this distorted look and so i'll just use the zoom feature instead it's just a lot cleaner to me all right so now we have our image duplicated underneath it just zoomed in so how do you add this blur effect well all you have to do is add another effect on that and that's going to be blur so you go back up here to filters and then go here to plus type in blur and you'll notice there are a variety of blur options available so i'm going to choose the simple one blur gaussian and here you can control the amount of blur that you want so i'm going to increase that so now you notice it's blurry and whenever i watch this it's going to have a blurry background that is now in motion behind it and so that's the first and i think the most traditional way in which you could do this but on this next step i'm going to be showing you a feature that's now built in that will kind of do all of this for you with just by adding one filter effect for all your email marketing needs, check out AWeber, the premier service news at geekoutdoors.com. Get signed up today for free and also get 100% free complete account migration. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the same blur effect, but this time using a new filter that's really meant for this. It's built to actually do this type of effect without having to go through the additional steps that we did on the original one. And so we'll go down here and select your clip and we'll go to filters, we'll go to plus sign and type in blur. And you see one called blur pad. So we we'll go ahead and choose that. And voila, you already have a blurred background. And if you play it, you notice that it's gonna do the same thing as the other one. It's going to mimic whatever image that you have or video that you have, and it's going to be blurred automatically. And then if you actually go to the actual blur pad properties, you can adjust things, specifically the size and dimensions, and also the blur effect, you know, in terms of percentages. So if I went down here to zero, there is no blur. So it's basically whatever portion of this video that you had, and it's going to mimic that. And as you can see, I was able to do all of that by just simply using one filter without actually having to add another track below that. Although you still might want to do that. I'm going to show you why. Because with this filter, even though it does this really quickly and it blurs the background um, to match what you have on the front, there will be issues with this. And so the issue comes in when you actually want to move the area that you want to be blurred. So let me show you. So in this case, you can do this by the numbers here, or you can move things manually. And if you notice, depending on where I have this, it will adjust the blur and zoom on the background. And at the same time, if I decrease this, your video is actually decreased as well. So let me show you this. So now it's only one portion of your original video so if I move this around, you could get this here. So with this step, even though it is a lot quicker, you don't have quite as much control. But what if you still wanted to use this new blur feature, but at the same time, you wanted to be able to move the position of where it zoom, but still be able to see the entire vertical video. Well, there is a way to do that. And it's very similar to what we did a little bit earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this filter. So here's our original video and we're going to do something very similar to what we did earlier. I'm going to go to our playlist. I'm going to drag this one down here in the track below it. So now it's below it. And here on this second one, I'm going to add the blur pad filter. So we'll go ahead and choose this. And now since it's on this layer below it, you can move things around, resize things without affecting your original video on top. So say, for example, I wanted to adjust this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this top one so you can see what's happening below it. So I'm going to zoom this down. I'm going to change the zoom area and I'm going to go like, you know, like up here somewhere. I want this to be the zoom area. But at the same time, I still want to see the whole video above it. OK, or the original vertical video. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this view back on. And now if you notice, there it is, you still see your whole vertical video because it is above it, 
but at the same time, you were able to change your blur area while still being able to see the whole entire video image. So that is the second, and I would say the quickest way for you to add the blur effect uh, underneath your vertical video. And obviously, if you use the other method, you do have more control with the size, position, and rotate filter. Well, for people who just want a quick blur effect underneath their existing video, then the blur pad filter is going to be the easiest way to do that. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways in which you do this effect, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my shotgun tutorial videos, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Gold Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check on the page, and sign up for my Gold Content Creators Group.